Shalom, shalom, my little friends. So, um, a, a few weeks ago, I had a YouTuber um, say some stuff about um, how his, his lady, his wife, had a issue with um, speaking bad about other people. And there was this one proverb that I could not remember, but I knew that it was in there somewhere, um, that, that really breaks this down for us um, of what we shouldn't do and, and what we should do, you know, as Jesus believers. And, and really how to approach, you know, his wife or husband, whoever it is that you, you're, you're having heaviness for because every time they talk about another person, you, you, you feel bad, you know, it hurts you. Because you know that you've done sin once before too. And, and, and that, that it's wrong for us to speak these words against our, our, our brother or sister. Uh, and, and, um, but, okay. So, I believe that it's Proverbs 25. Yeah, it is. Okay, Proverbs 25. These also are proverbs. These also are proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, copied. It is the glory of Yahuwah God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from silver, and it will go to the silversmith for jewelry. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not exalt yourself in the presence of a king. And do not stand in the place of great men, for it is better that he say to you, Come up here, than that you should be put lower in the presence of the prince, whom your eyes have seen. Do not go hastily to court, for what will you do in the end when your neighbor has put you to shame? What will you do in the end when your neighbor has put you to shame? If you take them to court, you know, for just silly stuff, stuff, things, materialism. This is what we, you know, start envying or having bitterness um, uh, toward our brother if we have animosity toward him. It, it's over things 90% of the time. Stuff, money, uh, and money buys things. Um, nine, debate your case with your neighbor himself. And do not disclose the secret to another. Don't go to another person and be like, man, look what he's doing to me. And look what she's doing to me. And how dare them, you know. And, and talking bad about um, the person has done you, you feel has done you wrong. Instead of talking bad about them, go before them. Go to them before you speak to anybody else. Now, if you're going to vent to a person, a friend that you know is going to give you good counsel, they're not going to be somebody that's going to be judgmental. Now, that's a different story. You're venting it. You're going to get counsel. But you got to, like, be easy with your words, even going and getting counsel. You might be angry and frustrated at this moment at this person. But you've got to realize that, that you've done sin once before, too. And, and, and that, that um, speaking these negative, uh, hateful things toward that person, judgmental things, um, is doing something in the spirit realm. And, and it's causing animosity in that person's soul. I believe that 100%. But, you know, the person that you're talking to, that you're venting to, it should be a person that's going to give you good words, good counsel, that's not going to have judgment, that they're going to look at their side as well. Because if you go to one that is not then they're going to have this wrong idea about this person over here. They're going to get, they're going to form an idea that you're giving them of this person. And it might be something just plain out silly that the enemy has got y'all warring on. You know, and, and um, good counsel is important. But it's important for us to, to, if we have a problem with someone right then, to speak it. Now me, myself, because of my old, because of the old Ashley, I will just walk off, and I'll go pray to Jesus, and I'll talk to Jesus so that that old Ashley don't come out. And then I'll go right back to that person and be like, hey, you know, like I'm having this problem. And, and, and that's how I do it. Now, I could be wrong at doing that, too. I just don't want that confrontation right now. I don't trust myself. Um, if I get angry or upset like that, I don't trust myself talking to that person yet. But I ain't supposed to be trusting me. I'm supposed to be trusting Jesus who speaks through me. And so therefore I'm not trusting that Jesus can contain my old self. You know, and it goes deep, you know. But on the subject, speaking bad about another person, take it before them 
If you've got a problem, go before that person. Don't go to another person and speak bad about them. And this is in Proverbs 25. He tells us, you know, how to be toward our brother or sister that we're angry at at the moment. He tells us how to, how to handle this. But so many of us think we know right. And, and we're going to go over here and we're going to speak all these words that we think we're right by what we're saying. And we're not right. Those words are just spewing out. It's just, it, it's um, vile. It's vile, vain, and vexed words. It vexes their soul and it vexes yours as well. Just because you're speaking the words into existence. You know, ooh, just having the thoughts is sin. Let alone speaking it. Okay. Let's see. Ten. At least he who hears it. Okay. Expose your shame and you ever... Okay, let's start at nine again. Debate your case with your neighbor himself and do not disclose the secret to another. Least he hear, least he who hears it exposes your shame and your reputation be ruined. <clears throat> and that's so true, you know. You go and you tell a person, oh, they've done this to me, and, and you know, and it's supposed to be, it, it's something that this person over here that's done you wrong could have complete um, hurt over of what's happened. And now you, you're the wrong person. Even if they've done you wrong, you're the wrong person just by going and speaking it to another in a mean, hateful, disgraceful way, judgmental way. And so there the shame goes on you. There the shame goes on the person that's speaking these mean words, you know, thinking that they're right. They're doing righteous judgment just by speaking it, you know, but they're not. The shame is coming upon them because the person they're telling is going to go and they're going to say it to somebody else. Well, so-and-so... Um, had an issue with Ashley, and boy, she was just going off about it, and, and look what Ashley's done, you know? And Ashley over here might have, like, major uh, sorrow because of what has happened. Might be battling some sorrow and uh, um, uh, discouragement because she's hurt her, her brother or sister, you know? Um, it goes deep. You know, this little tongue, it's a world of iniquity. Um... Mm hmm Okay. Eleven. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. Like an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold is a wise reprover to an obedient ear. A wise reprover to an obedient ear. Now look. Lee, let's go back to verse 10. Least he who hears it exposes your shame and your reputation is ruined. I like it that my friends trust me. To come to me with anything. I love that. They know that they can come to me and say, Hey, Ashley, you've said something that has hurt my feelings. You've bothered me. You know, you, you've done something that has bothered me. That, I love that. That's my reputation with them. They know that I'm not going to be like this person is going to go off and speak hateful, angry words against them, um, and, and, and I know that they're not going to do the same to me, you know, but, but if I went and spoke horrible words about this person that's done me wrong, then they're not going to ever come back to me and, and talk to me about things again, because I've done, you know, broke that, that trust of friendship that we can work it out ourselves instead of bringing in five, six, seven, eight parties who now they have their ideas and they go and tell other people. It's a, it's a vicious cycle, vicious cycle. Okay, so 11, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and settings of silver. Like an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold is a wise reprover to an obedient ear. That is beautiful. Apples of gold and settings of silver? Earrings of gold and an ornament of fine gold? That's what a, a reprover is to an obedient ear. An obedient ear. One that obeys what the Holy Spirit when in breath is telling them to do. One that listens. If you're being reproved, you've said something wrong, you've judged your brother, you're, you're taking on the court for no reason, you're in, and you know, speaking these judgments, these, these words against your brother or sister who's done you wrong, you're really taking them to court. You're judging them. Without even talking to them about it, you're judging them. But this, a reprover, one that, that, a reprover, 
A wise reprover to an obedient ear. A wise reprover, one that, that comes before in a sweet, loving, gentle manner. You know, says, hey, you've done this wrong to me. I need to have that obedient ear. Right, and then, and then we're this apples of gold and settings of silver and an earring of gold of ornament and an ornament of fine gold. Because we're actually, you know, taking that correction and being the wise reprover, whichever one you are at that moment. A wise reprover, one that, that doesn't do it in anger, discouragement, um, you know, loudness, but does it in love and gentleness. That's a wise reprover. And the obedient ear needs to accept that correction and, oh, please forgive me, my friend, for doing what I've done to you, you know, and whatever it may be, yeah? Okay, all right. Like the cold, verse 13, like the cold of snow in time of harvest is a faithful messenger to those who send him, for he refreshes the soul of his masters. Ooh. Whoever falsely boasts of giving is like clouds and wind without rain. Whoever falsely boasts of giving mm, is like clouds of wind and without rain. By long forbearance, a ruler is persuaded, and a gentle tongue breaks a bone. A gentle tongue breaks a bone. That's something. A tongue is the most deceitful member of the body. Little bitty thing. And, 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 and if it's gentle, it breaks a bone. So let's read the whole thing again. By long forbearance, a ruler is persuaded. You know, you have patience with him and... And, and, and yeah, calmness and a gentle tongue breaks a bone. As something, a gentle tongue, calm, sweet, meek words, the fruit of the Holy Spirit when in breath. That's a gentle tongue. Doing things in love and not in anger, not in, in, in hatefulness, but in love. 16. Have you found honey? Eat only as much as you need. Least you be filled with it and vomit. Sit him, set foot in your neighbor's house. I don't even know what that word is. My goodness. S-E-I-D-O-M. Set foot in your neighbor's house. Least he become weary of you and hate you. I do not even know what that just said. I cannot comprehend what, what I just read there. S-E-I-D-O-M. That has got to be a Mandela effect. I've never seen that word before in my life. I'm going to have to go look that up. Okay, check. 18. A man who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a club, a sword, and a sharp arrow. A man who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a club, a sword, and a sharp arrow. Ooh. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a bad tooth and a foot out of joint. That hurts. Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble. Think about that. I've been that unfaithful man in a time of trouble. And thinking I got confidence that this is going to go well. This is going to happen right. But I ain't got faith in Jesus, so it don't go well. It don't happen right. And then I'm putting check of, hey, you didn't have faith in me. You are totally being unfaithful. You are not having faith. And, and me protecting you, taking care of this situation, having your back, not forsaking you. Mm. 20. Like one who takes away a garment in cold weather and like vinegar on soda is one who sings songs to a heavy heart. Aww. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For so you will heap coals of fire on his head and you who the Lord will reward you. I don't know very many people that do that. Man, if you got enemies, people nowadays, if you got an enemy, you ain't gonna give them no food. You ain't gonna give them no drink. And if you do, you'll talk about, oh, I should have done something in that drink. I should have done something in that food. Or you'll talk about how I shouldn't have done that for them because of all the bad stuff that they've done to you. Like, and we're supposed to be, you know, treating them just like we want to be treated. Even our enemies. Even the enemies. And it says, let's see. Because you will heap coals of fire on his head. 
He won't be able to say anything against you. You do it in honor. It's just, do it in honor. He can't say nothing against you. Because you're, you're doing it in a loving, gentle, um, kind way. You're not uh, feeding him, your enemy, the same thing he's feeding you. That, uh, you know, discouragement, anger, and hatred. Good stuff there. And the Lord will reward you if you if you do it, a feed, um, and, and give your enemy a drink. The north wind, verse 23, the north wind brings forth rain and a backbiting tongue and anger and countenance. Through that. It is better to dwell in a corner of a housetop than in a house shared with a contentious woman. I used to hear this Bible verse run through my brain constantly. Um, because in the beginning, Opie uh, had lots of anger and, 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 and I felt like I was, you know, constantly battling this, this anger, this complaining, this, this, this hurt that he had. I was constantly, you know, I was living with an angry and contentious person, man. When Opie started, you know, getting better with, with not complaining and, and um, um, doing better with his words and, and not doing it in anger then um, more of my anger came out. And I started realizing that, that I was becoming that angry and contentious woman. And maybe I had already been, and I just wasn't um, seeing it because I was so studied on his. But he came out of it. Praise Yahushua Jesus. And Yahushua Jesus blessed me to see it, and I came out of that because I was seeing it. I'm telling you, that Bible verse, it definitely stayed stuck in my mind all the time and that other one uh, uh, a complainer is like a, a, a continuous dripping from a, a leaky roof or something along those lines yeah those those stayed because I, I, I was a complainer as well my flesh wants to go back to the complaining um, and, and uh, that's not a Yahushua Jesus I ain't trusting in him if I do that okay 24 is better to dwell oh no 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 25, as cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a far country. Hallelujah, what you said. A righteous man who falters before the wicked is like a murky spring in a polluted well. It is not good to eat much honey, so to seek one's own glory is not glory. That's right. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down and without walls. We need to be praying for our spirit. You know, we need to be praying for our soul. Uh, and, and speaking to our spirit. Speaking, you know, to our soul. But speaking to our spirit, 100%. We need to be talking to herself. David did. King David did. Uh, he, I believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three. God is, is all three. He is Father, He's Son, and He's Holy Spirit. We are all three. We have soul, spirit, and flesh. That's what God has. Soul, flesh, and spirit. Father, the soul. Jesus, the flesh. And spirit. The Holy Spirit went in breath. The Ruach HaKadosh. And so... so we have to talk to ourselves, you know, like we got to talk to ourselves. Like, hey, you need to straighten up. Quit listening to the flesh so much. Spirit, you know, overcome what the flesh is trying to do. No doubt. I have rule over your own spirit. But this is what interesting. This one, uh, before we leave here, here, a righteous man who falters before the wicked is like a murky spring in a polluted well. Oh, it is not good to eat much honey, so to seek one's own glory is not glory. Everything we do, we should be giving glorification to Yahushua Jesus, Son of the living God, our King of Kings. He gives us everything. He does everything. What was that in, uh, is it, was it in Hebrews I was reading? Where it was either Hebrews or 1 Corinthians 14. So it was either Hebrews chapters 1, 2, or 3. And for, or First Corinthians chapter fourteen, where it was talking about that he, um, all men build, all men build, but the Lord Yahuwah, God Almighty, is the builder of all things. I think that's how it went. 
if I had my Bible, um, the other Bible. Oh, ah, there it is. Okay. Um, Hebrews uh, 3, 4. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is you who are God. So no matter what, we should be giving him glory for everything. You know, everything. And so when we seek our own glory, it's nothing. It's just, it's just, a, it's nothing. When we give him glory, Yahushua Jesus, then it's something. We got something there, you know? Oh, it's amazing. Um, I hope that this has helped uh, um, my, little, my little friend that has messaged. And um, uh, Marie that's from Australia. I don't know if you still listen or not. I love your packages that you've sent me. I love the letters that you've sent me. Um, I, I'm to, yes, to even get anything out is a challenge. Um, but I've tried calling um, the number that you gave me from Australia and uh, I, something I can't get through. But I would really like to have your phone number. So whatever we got to do to get that done, I guess, hmm, my, my email, you should just email me, right? You should just email me. It's we wrestle not flesh and blood at yahoo.com. Just email me. I don't care. Um, and and uh, uh, your email me, and I will I will give you my phone number so that you can call me, and we'll see if it works out like that. Cause I really want to talk to you. You're amazing. Praise you, Husha Jesus. I'm so grateful for you. Y'all have a blessed day in the name of you, Husha Jesus. And thank you so much for listening.